You know, this one time I was sitting at home and I was typing really fast on my phone and I've been using my phone since like 10th grade, I think. So I do type really fast on my phone. And this one time my grandmother comes in and she's just like, oh, you're always on your phone. Do you have like a special somebody? And I'm just like, listen, man, there is no one in my life. Just because I type really fast doesn't mean it means anything. Maybe I'm just jobless on the internet. Have you ever thought about that? So I have really chill and supportive parents who love to watch what I do. But but like it's kind of weird how grandparents haven't changed their mentality in like so long you know they just arrive at conclusions like that but you know what else hasn't changed or evolved in the past few years keyboards and yes that is my segue for today's topic which is keyboards and their design and it got me thinking a lot of people have work on their computers and you have to learn how to type really fast and the thing about keyboards is that it hasn't changed its design in many many years the same qwerty keyboard that was created about 150 years ago when like typewriters existed it's the same design till today and what makes this design stand out and what makes it so special there's got to be something if if a design permeates through a century, that means it is probably a really good design or we've just gotten accustomed to it. So let's actually take a deep dive into what this QWERTY keyboard means. More on this further in the video. Just like anybody else who wants to know something new, I went to Google and I googled about the QWERTY design. So great, I'm realizing a lot of things. The reason why the QWERTY keyboard came to be is because the typewriter mechanism needed the letters to be a little further away from each other so that when you're typing it in rapid succession it wouldn't clash so you know that in a typewriter you have those little sticks that come out and punch the letter right so when you're typing the type bar basically stamps the letter onto the paper if all the letters were like close to each other and if you typed in rapid succession they would all clash with each other and the mechanism just wouldn't work so we've always been stuck with this QWERTY layout for the longest time now that I've explained about the typewriter when using keyboards you you don't have the type bar mechanism so you don't exactly need to have it in the QWERTY layout because it doesn't really matter if the letters are right next to each other or not because there is no type bar on a keyboard so for some reason this design has just permeated through our systems and we've been so accustomed to using it that we don't actually even question why the layout is the way it is and we've just accepted it for the way it's always been I took a deep dive into the internet more about the keyboards and I found out that the average typing speed for a person is about 40 words per minute and if you think that's really fast I think I average about a 70 words per minute so Ram averages about 90 words per minute which is like really fast by the way so I realized that when I was typing and like measuring my speed we did realize that I got certain letters wrong and Ram got certain letters wrong so both of us had certain words that were spelled wrong even though we typed really fast and we realized that a lot of people might have the same problem as well. You might type really fast or really slow, but you will get certain words wrong. So there's a website for that called keyboardbr.com. So I tried it out and what I realized is that the way it works is it picks a few keys. So the letters that I got were E-N-I-T-R-L and then it tries to detect which of these letters you tend to get wrong the most. So when you start hitting all of those keys right, you don't get get those letters as often because you're actually not making a lot of mistakes there but the letters that you do get wrong you'll keep getting those letters back again and again in different words and in different sequences so that you can get accustomed to hitting those keys right so it will observe your weaknesses and it'll keep throwing it at you to make sure that you get strong in those places but if you do make a mistake in a word my suggestion would be that you delete the entire word and type type it out again in the right sequence. One of the most important things to know while you're using your keyboard is the keyboard shortcuts. Not a lot of people use keyboard shortcuts and I think that's quite a shame because there's more to the keyboard than just control V, control C. When you do know your keyboard shortcuts, you do end up getting into the creative flow, you know. Once you get into your zen mode,
mode when you're doing something productive. You don't want anything to break the flow of productivity that you have going on. I will put up a link in my description where you can go see a lot more of these command shortcuts. Another crucial thing in developing a very fast typewriting skill is to actually memorize your keyboard. And I'm not saying this as in like you should know where each key is. I'm saying that your fingers should know it before you can even think about it. So it's a lot more about muscle memory. So the way that you can do this is start typing without looking down on your keyboard or getting a keyboard with blank keycaps. So that way you will actually be able to know if you can type without seeing at all. So if you're using the QWERTY keyboard, you have the home row which is A S D F J K L and semicolon and you also have F and J which have a little bump on it to allow you to position your fingers on the keyboard. So if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend just doing online tests of like writing sentences over and over but we recommend you to use online typing tests which allow you to memorize the position of the keys first instead of just asking you to type sentences. So there's this website called Monkey Type. Monkey Type basically allows you to test your accuracy and your typing speed and this way you will be able to gauge if you're actually as accurate or fast as you think you are. So that's one website that I thought that would be useful if you're planning on getting really fast with your typing. But if you're beyond the QWERTY keywords, I would suggest you to switch to a Colmax. So most importantly, it's based off the QWERTY so you won't feel a little thrown off when you use it and there are only 17 keys that have been moved from the initial QWERTY layout. Most important keys like Z, X, C and V which you use for most of undo, copy, paste shortcuts, they retain their QWERTY positions and as do the brackets which is commonly used in programming and the semicolon does change its location though. So it is a feat of engineering that cuts the motion of your fingers by more than 50% than using a QWERTY layout. And when I type my fingers are not flying all over the keyboard and it basically maintains its position in the home row so this way you don't actually have to rather just you get what I mean and another interesting thing that I read about the Colmac is that it eliminates the caps lock key in favor of a second backspace key which means that you don't have to inadvertently shout at people by using caps lock so now that i've actually taken a deep dive into a little bit of history a little bit of modern engineering a little bit of tips and tricks and websites in this video i would suggest that you go ahead and start practicing so the next time someone asks you hey what are you really good at you can probably be like i'm really fast at typing bro maybe this can be one of those things where you're really impressive at that's how self-improvement works you do it for yourself and yeah that's it for today's video and i hope you found this useful and use the resources that i gave you and yeah i'll see you all in the next one bye